Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of In Pit Lane. Well as you can see once again we're behind the Suburban Curtain here in lockdown at the In Pit Lane corporate headquarters. Not back in the studio but hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, we'll be back very, very soon. Hopefully we'll be back in before the Federal Government shuts down Channel 31. Uh, more about that later. But right now let's not waste any more time. I'll let, let you know that coming up this weekend right across Australia on pay TV is the biggest drag racing event seen, in, seen outside of the United the States. It's the annual Winter Nationals and joining us a little bit later on in the program as our special guest will be top fuel racer Phil Reed. The Reed family of course synonymous with drag racing in Australia and we'll be catching up with Phil about the Winter Nationals a little bit later on in the show. But right now there's been a lot happening internationally over the weekend in motorsport. Let's find out what happened with the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. <laughs> The famous Nürburgring 24 hours became the Nürburgring nine and a half hours on the weekend as the Eiffel region's notorious weather played havoc with the event. The race started in damp conditions under threatening skies before torrential rain caused havoc after about 45 minutes of racing. Despite several big accidents, the race continued, but as the rain stopped, the fog rolled in and at 9.30pm the red flag came out. Overall, over 14 hours of racing were lost before the race restarted on Sunday afternoon. Local knowledge was again an advantage as local heroes, the Mansai Racing Porsche team of Kevin Estra, Michael Christensen and Matteo Caroli crossed the line just nine seconds clear of last year's winner, the Rover Racing BMW M6 of Sheldon van der Linde, Martin Tomziak, Marco Whitman and Connor de Filippi. Third was the team Get Speed Mercedes AMG of Maximilian Gotts, Daniel Juncadella and Raphael Marciello. Australia's Josh Burden finished back in 63rd place, while the Porsche of fellow Aussie Matt Campbell retired on lap 26. Much better weather in Azerbaijan on the streets of Baku for the Formula One Grand Prix, but it was no less dramatic. Charles Leclerc showed that his Monaco qualifying form was no fluke, and he led away early from pole. Lewis Hamilton took the lead from the Frenchman early and held on until a slow pit stop sent him out behind Max Verstappen. Sergio Perez also made it past the Mercedes for second place. Lance Stroll stayed out on his hard Pirellis and moved up to fourth, but on lap 31, his left-hand rear tyre exploded on the main straight, putting him into the wall at high speed. Verstappen looked comfortable out at front, but with five laps to go, bang! His left rear tyre also let go. This brought out the red flag, and at the restart, Hamilton locked his front tyres, leaving Perez to go on to take the win from a delighted Sebastian Vettel in the Aston Martin, with Pierre Gasly third. Leclerc was fourth ahead of Lando Norris. Daniel Ricciardo recovered from a poor qualifying session, where he crashed in Q2 to finish in ninth place. Melbourne driver Oscar Piastri strengthened his position in the chase for the Formula 2 title at Baku, after a second place finish in the feature race. It was a great recovery for the Melbourne driver after he was taken out on the opening lap of the weekend's first race. He bounced back to finish eighth in the second race, setting the fastest lap along the way to receive bonus championship points. Yuri Vips won the feature race to keep his championship hopes alive. Piastri's second place means he's now closed the gap to series leader China's Guangzhou Zhou to just five points after three of eight rounds. The Kyle Larson Show rolls on in NASCAR with a win in the latest round on the spectacular Sonoma Road Course. The hometown hero swept every stage of the race to lead home Chase Elliott for the second consecutive week. The result gave Hendrick Motorsport its fourth straight race with the top two drivers. Two-time Sonoma winner Martin Truex Jr. was third. Northern California, uh, this will always, always be home to me, uh, even if I live way out on the East Coast now. So uh, thank all you fans for coming out. I know there's a lot of sprint car fans in the, in the stands and around this racetrack. Uh, I've got to see a lot of my friends here today. Um, I got my family here. Uh, Owen and Audrey, they are here, but I'm sure you're watching Grandma's house. So I wish you guys were here. Um, just unbelievable. And, and to get you know back-to-back -back wins in the Cup Series is something I've always dreamt of doing, and uh, to get it done feels great. So. Um, to win last week on Memorial uh, Day weekend, uh, four in a row now, uh, if you count my dirt racing too, and got a big week of racing coming up. So uh, look forward to all that and look forward to just keeping the streak going. The race was forced into overtime after four cautions in the final 19 laps, setting up the grandstand finish. 
A surprise return to supercar racing for Kiwi drivers Greg Murphy and Richie Stanaway. The pair will run a Boost Mobile-backed Erebus Commodore in this year's Bathurst 1000. The decision to run the wildcard entry came after an online media campaign by Boost founder Peter Adderton. Murphy's comeback comes seven years after retiring from supercar racing and marks his 23rd Bathurst 1000 start, with wins in 1996, 99, 2003 and 2004. It'll be the fifth start for the former Aston Martin Works driver Stanaway, who made the shock decision to quit the sport two years ago. Stanaway is still only 29. And another win for Remy Gardner in Moto2 last weekend at Barcelona. Gardner celebrated his new MotoGP contract for next year with pole position and a win, going back-to-back -back for the first time in his career. It was the first time since Casey Stoner in 2005 that an Australian has won two intermediate class races in a row. Gardner's rookie teammate Ralph Fernandez took second, with local rider Xavi Vierge back on the podium for the first time since 2018. In the main event, it was more good news for KTM as Miguel Oliveira took out his first win in the Red Bull KTM Racing Colours. Oliveira outdueled Fabio Quattararo and then the hard charging Johan Zarco to win the race. Zarco was second, with Jack Miller completing the podium. The Australian crossed the line fourth behind Quattararo, but was promoted to third place after the first of two penalties for the Spanish rider. And that's the In Pit Lane Motorsport News for the week commencing Monday the 7th of June 2021. We'll have more news next week. And we'll have more news as we said next week. Now of course coming up in the few weeks time Channel 31 and in fact all community television in Australia will be going off the air. That's if the federal government once again has their way. Yes Channel 31's licence is up for renewal at the end of this month and at this stage the federal government have said that they will not renew our licence that means that on, uh, just Jan on June the 30th, um, at midnight, Channel 31 will cease to exist. The, this program and all the programs on Channel 31 will just disappear from free-to-air television forever. They're off the screen, and all you'll have for the next five or six years on this particular frequency is... Nothing. Now, if you think that's a good use of uh, public airwaves, well, then you're a better man than I, Gunga Din. But we would urge you to please support Channel 31 and Channel 44. Uh, make sure you contact your local member of parliament, your federal member of parliament, and tell them that you support saving local TV. It's it's not just programs like In Pit Lane, it's all the music programs, other local sport, programs that give valuable training and exposure to young people in the industry, independent filmmakers, musicians... Uh, like the people coming up at the end of the program. I was going to say young musicians, but at the end of the program, our band tonight are not young musicians. You'll find out more about that a little bit later on in the show. But right now, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be joined by our special guest, Top Fuel Racer Phil Reed, to talk about this weekend's big Winter Nationals meeting up at Willowbank Dragway in Queensland. So stay tuned. You're watching still Channel 31 and In Pit Lane. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, coming up this weekend is what is described as the biggest event of its kind outside of the USA. It's the annual Winter Nationals, a huge drag racing event that's happening at Willowbank Raceway in Queensland. The good news for us here in Melbourne and around right around Australia is, well, if you've got pay TV, particularly uh, whether it's Foxtel or KO, you can see all of the action live. Our guest tonight is someone who's going to be competing in the top level of uh, of the event this weekend. They're the, they're the Formula Ones of drag racing, and I'm, of course, talking about Top Fuel. And we really are we're really happy to have him here tonight. He's uh, he's part of a, a part of drag racing royalty here in Australia. Please welcome to the program Phil Reed. Phil, thanks for joining us in pit lane. Glad to be here, mate. Glad to be here. Now, tell us first of all. Let's uh, let's talk about this weekend. I mean, where does the Winter Nationals fit? I mean, for people who aren't hardcore drag racing fans, I mean, is, is, is how big is this in your year? Is this sort of your Bathurst one thousand? Yeah, equivalent to that. Yeah, my dad quoted that many years ago. Um, it's, it, it's unusually it's bigger than our Australian titles. It's the one that everybody wants to win. I've been fortunate enough to win it a couple of times myself, but I actually haven't won it since two thousand six. So. I'm looking to get back in the winner's circle like we did a couple of weeks ago here in Sydney. 
So tell us about the car you're driving. I mean, for people who want to say it's a Formula One of, of of drag racing, I mean, for people who are you know, more traditional road racing fans and all that, they look at Formula One and go, oh, wow, they're just so powerful and they're just so fast. We're talking about the car you drive is pretty much as powerful as half the field or more of Formula One cars. Describe the car to us. What is it and um, you know, what are the details? Um, it's 11,000 horsepower, which is equivalent, referring back to Bathurst, if you take the first 10 rows of the of the grid at Bathurst, put that behind me, that's how much horsepower I've got. So naught to 160 kilometres an hour in less than, in about 0.8 of a second. So I leave the start line in 0.8 of a second or 60 feet, I'm doing 160 kilometres an hour and it's, you know, about six or seven Gs on the start line. So the same as a space shuttle, accelerating off the ground. What are they like to to drive in? I mean, a lot of people would once again think that you know you're just sitting there, you point it, you press the loud pedal, you go, you pull the you pull the chutes, and that's it. And describe the run for us. Take us through from the time you start up, do your burnout, and all the rest of it. How does it all happen? Um, the actual driving it, it's you ask any driver, and I say you got to you got to experience it to to know what it's like when you step on the throttle. But basically, we start the car. I'll turn the fuel pumps on. My brother will give me a signal. As he turns the starter, I start the car. We'll set the fuel pressure to about 100 PSI. He checks all the all the parameters on, on the dash. I've actually got a dash in the car. Uh, then he'll motion me forward into the water. One of my crew guys will signal me. I'll, I'll then... We actually have a throttle stop by law. You've got to have it now, which limits the car and the burnout. That way you don't blow it up on the, on the jack stands because we are running a lot of fuel through it. Um, I'll do the burnout, slow down, come to a stop, click it into reverse, back up. The guys will will, will guide me back now. On, on, a, on a bad track, you'll guide back right where my burnout tracks are. On a good track, you'll actually straddle that. So you're not actually sitting in your rubber because, believe it or not, we need wheel speed off the start line. Our wheels are actually spinning as we leave the start line. Um, if ever you hear of a driver talk about tyre shake, that's because the actual track has grabbed the rear tyres. That means too much grip, and it actually runs over itself. So the tyres start to shudder, which then goes through the car, and it's not a pleasant feeling. So after the burnout, we go in, and I'll pull my first top light on. Now, if I'm racing someone else, I'm, courtesy says I, I uh, wait for them to get their top light on. Then we go through the procedure of I take my foot off the clutch. I, first of all, I pull the fuel pumps all the way on because in the burnout we're only setting it to about 100 pounds so i'll pull the fuel pump lever all the way on take my foot off the clutch and then you'll you'll see the front tires if you want to stay shallow they'll actually move very edge because we want to be in shallow so that second bulb only just illuminates then obviously the other driver will come in minute you see the amber you mash on the throttle then basically all hell breaks loose you, it sits you back in the seat, your chin strap's pulling hard, you, you, your head's trying to roll on your helmet. And then I, the way I drive, I'm looking, there's, there's cones all the way down the centre of that racetrack. So I'm, I'm watching those cones, so the 60 feet will go by, 330, 600 feet, and then you'll see the finish line coming up extremely fast if you're on a good run. So it's, um, it's an awesome feeling in the car because around about 300 feet, the car will leave hard and then about another 300 feet out, it'll, it'll feel like it's leaving the start line again when the clutch starts to engage and all the fuel system and the magnetos kick in. So it, it really tugs on your chin strap and hopefully by half track we're getting up around 290 to 300 miles an hour. So then when you go across the finish line, that's when, you know, if you've... I can always tell when my car runs over about 300, under the old quarter mile. If I went over 320 miles an hour, I could feel it on my, on my seatbelts because when you pull the parachutes, it wants to put your forehead, it wants to touch the dash because it's, it's, the deceleration is as hard as the acceleration off the start line. Then once you settle down, you just start turning things off, turn around the bottom end, and hopefully you've had a good run. There's no fire coming in over your shoulder like I was on last meeting. But, um, yeah, and that, that about sums it up. That's I've probably took longer to explain how a run goes. And believe it or not, I can talk about the run all the way back in the tow vehicle, telling the boys what happened on the run, yet it only took me 3.8 seconds to do that particular run. Okay, so what's the uh, what's the situation for the rest of the year after uh, after Willow Bank? Assuming that things you know start to get better, and it's a big if at the moment, but assuming everything goes better, what are your plans for the rest of the year? And is there any chance we might see you and a couple of the other guys down here in Victoria at some stage? 
like this is our final round. Our season runs from September to June. The next season is already in the pipeline. I can see us hopefully, and I'm pretty confident we'll run it um, in Bendigo, I think, within the next 12 months. If the new owners at Heathcote Park Raceway, they're doing a tremendous job down there and upgrading their facility. And I'm hoping that, you know, all going well, we'll, we'll race in, in Victoria in the next 12 months. Calder Park, you keep hearing rumours about that, but um, I tend to stay out of the politics of the sport. I leave that to my brother and my father. Um, I've heard numerous times, hey, we're going to race in Calder. But unfortunately, we've been hearing that since, you know, Bob Jane was alive. And, and you know, my my take on that is when I'm strapped into my car looking to go down that racetrack in Calder is when I believe that we're racing in Calder. Well, hopefully we do see you back uh, here in Victoria very soon. Thanks for joining us. Good luck to, uh, starting tomorrow over the weekend. People can watch it, as we said, on Foxtel and KO over the weekend. It's going to be a big weekend of drag racing in all the categories. But for now, Phil Reed, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. No problem. If anybody's there on the weekend, come up to the Hydrolink Top Fuel team and say hello and let me know you saw this and tell me whether I was good or not. Okay, thanks a lot, Phil. Thanks a lot for that. No problem at all. You have a good day. The show may be over, but the motorsport chat continues with Full Course Yellow, the In Pit Lane after party. We're on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel live most Thursday nights at 9.30, straight after In Pit Lane here on Channel 31. So, why not join us? Yes, I hope you'll join us for Full Course Yellow every week after the program here on Channel 31, at least for the time that we're still on Channel 31. Yes, as I said at the start of the program, remember that on June the 30th, Channel 31 Melbourne and Channel 44 Adelaide will be taken off the air by the federal government. It's got nothing to do with uh, with money. We don't get a cent from the from the federal government. There is no ongoing government funding or taxpayer funding of Channel, Channel 31 or 44. Community television has been over its 30 years basically self-sufficient. But unfortunately, for purely ideological reasons, the government are going to take Channel 31 off the air on June the 30th. We had a stay of execution last last year, a very, very last minute stay of execution. We're hoping, uh, fingers crossed, that we can do that again this, uh, this time around. But we really need your help. If you haven't been online, there is an online petition and you can go to the In Pit Lane or Channel 31 Facebook pages and uh, you can find out how you can sign the petition there. But far more importantly, we all know signing petitions it makes us all feel good and it's really great but the, the real way to get change is to approach your local member of parliament your federal member of parliament and tell them how important channel 31 has been to you over the past three decades we're all com almost coming up to three decades of community television and quite frankly if, if the experiment uh, if it was if it was an experiment i think you could probably say it's been a success so uh, please help save local tv uh, tell all your friends and then get everybody to contact both your local federal member of parliament and also the office of the minister for the arts paul fletcher mp he's based up in sydney he doesn't understand community television or community media sydney has never ever understood community media it's it's, it's a bizarre thing rest of australia is fine with it sydney just look at it and go you don't make money out of it what's the point then but uh, we know what the point is. It's to give you exposure to bands like our band tonight, The Nish. Now, I say young bands, but uh, no, they're not young. They're not exactly young. They are, by their own admission, purveyors of pensioner metal at a, at a time when a lot of people are basically going fishing and putting their feet up. A bunch of friends got together and said, no, nah, let's, uh, hey, guys, let's start a band, a metal band. And they're going to take us out. They joined us on stage at the Mr. Boogeyman Bar for our tune-up sessions on Wednesday night. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and they uh, they put on quite the performance so i'm um, you know crank it up to all the way up to 11 throw away the walking frames and get ready for some pensioner metal from Danish. but until we see you next week on the program from all of us here at in pit lane thanks for joining us and bye for now and here is Danish. good night <laughs>